Hi and welcome to Time with Natalie, the show that helps you to maximise your time and balance your life. I'm here today in London with a most amazing, amazing guest. He's an inspirational speaker, coach, trainer, author, the list goes on. Hello, Les Brown. Hi. Hi. I'm not all that. I'm just <laughs> Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I feel blessed to be in your presence. Oh. Your name is Cleopatra Nefertiti. It's one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blushing, but you can't see it. But I see I'm blushing as well, and maybe you can see that. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you for joining me today. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. Now, you yes. speak all around the world. I know you're here this weekend to speak at uh, yes. Success in London. What would you say that one of the biggest challenges is that you find for people that are, are trying to become successful in whatever area of life? What do you think is, is one of the main challenges that they face? Overcoming their private voice that they're not aware of. How we live our lives is a result of the story we believe about themselves. This Les Brown that you now see, I had no idea that he existed. I was born in an abandoned building on the floor. I'm adopted. When I was in fifth grade, I was labeled educable, mentally retarded. I was put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade. I fell again and I was in the eighth grade. And given my environment and circumstances, I have no college training, the story I was born into and I embraced was that I was supposed to be poor. But it was not conscious, it was unconscious, how people live their lives. Nine out of 10 of those choices are governed by the private voice, the story that they tell themselves. And so at this event, what we do at the Success Seminar is interrupt that story. That's what psychologists call their self-explanatory style. And through the execution of the presentation, begin to expand their vision of themselves and what's possible, and then inspire them, as Mother Teresa would say, to become a pencil in the hand of God and start writing a new chapter in their lives. Oh, I love that. Yes. I really love that. And and I know we were speaking earlier about uh, one of my fears, because I think a lot of people have a lot of fears that, yes. they, that they have and that they've carried along with them for, for years and years and years. And I know we were talking earlier about public speaking, presenting, that kind of thing is a fear for me. So how can we help? How can you help somebody that to That fear, public speaking and other fears that we have are acquired. We're only born with one fear. And that's a fear of a loud sound. You have a loud sound around a baby, it will jump. But all the other fears, those fears are acquired. And so if you can take them on, you can also release them. And so through the process of the presentation at Success Seminars and all the various presenters, what we do is give a person a vision of themselves beyond their circumstances and their mental conditioning and their self-explanatory style and give them the methods and techniques that will allow them to carve out a life for themselves in this new economy. This is the era of what the late Peter Drucker calls the era of the three C's, accelerated change, overwhelming complexity, and tremendous competition. So people now need to learn how to become more resourceful, how to find out what is it I have going for me. They say the two most important moments in your life is the day that you're born and the day that you realize why you were born. Because at the end of the day, you were not born to work for a living, but to live your making. And so at the Success Conference, what we do is teach people how to find out what they have going for them and teach them the success strategies that are tried and proven on how they can begin to live life triumphantly. I love that because my company is called Inspired Dreams and mm -hmm. I have this slogan called Watch Your ID. And yes. it means two things. It means watch your inspired dream and watch your identity. Mm -hmm. And I always believe that, you know, my show is all about helping people to maximize their time. And I, I really don't think you can do that unless you actually know what your identity is yes. and you know what your purpose is on on this earth. So you help at Success in London, it, you will help them to, to, to find out. We you know, teach them how to manage themselves, but also how to get unstuck. But because the things that affect most people that they don't even realize, I did not know that my relationships affected me. My mother said, Leslie, if you run around with nine broke people, I guarantee you, you'll become number 10. <laughs> Well, come to find out, Mama was right. She only had a third grade education. But studies indicate, uh, MIT, that you earn within two to three thousand dollars of your closest friends. So, so poverty and, and living a mediocre life is communicated mind to mind. And so your relationships can hold you down or they can lift you up. So I teach people to practice the principle of OQP, 
only quality people. Dr. Dennis Kimbrough said, if you're the smartest one in your group, you need to get a new group. Mm. And so it's very important that people upgrade their relationships. And, and that's the kind of environment that's created at success seminars. There are three things that's major to be able to make it today. Number one, transforming your mindset. Because you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. Number two, upgrading your skill set. You have to have a game plan to keep your head of technology and outsourcing. And three, creating, and this is major what the Success Seminar does, communities of collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationships. When you have those three things going for you, there's nothing you can't do. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree, I totally agree. And I think it's so important, like you were saying, to surround yourself with the right people because I'm very much a person who, I can smell an opportunity a mile away. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I just love it. I love taking off, you know, taking risks and, and just seeing the opportunity is in front of me, but mm -hmm. but not everybody's like that. And sometimes no, when I mention but it see, to I people, see, I like that in you. See, most people believe opportunity knocks on every door. Mm -hmm. You and I believe no. Opportunity stands by silently, waiting for you to recognize it. Mm -hmm. So you're on the right trail. Yeah. 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 You're just brilliant. <laughs> what does it feel like to be beautiful and brilliant too? No, I wish yes. I was. I wish I was. But how do you handle people that are negative? Because, you know, when you see something, normally it's specifically given to you, you know, yes. for you to do something with. I but encourage you... people, don't try and change people. It's a full-time job changing yourself. Mm. There's some people that are so negative, they could walk in a dark room and begin to develop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, behave, whatever. I'm sorry, my medication is wearing off. So, so the key to it is this, that, that most people are just emotional vampires. And so until the, the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change, they will never change. And so my philosophy is let go or be dragged. Let them go or they will drag you down. The key to success in relationships, I believe my favorite book says, he's whoever will, let him come. Work with the willing. A person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. I have a twin brother. We are both adopted by Mrs. Mamie Browderall with five other kids. We are different. And I tried to help my brother lose weight. And I gained 14 pounds. <laughs> OK. So I said, OK. All right. No. Leave negative people alone. They have a right to live, too. Just leave them alone. And if you have a full glass, they have an empty glass, you don't have to tell them they have an empty glass. They will see the difference. And when they get sick and tired of being sick and tired, mm -hmm. they will figure it out. They will do something about this situation. Until then, you'll be wasting your time, resources, and money. OK. And so what is your definition of success? Success to me is doing that which resonates with your heart, that provides some quality of service to others. Mm -hmm. When you're doing that, in my life, I, I help people to change their lives. And, mm -hmm. And when I do that, you know, love, happiness, and inspiration are perfumes you can't sprinkle on others without getting a few drops on yourself. Can you hear my British accent? I can, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the number one thing, if there is one, there's probably more than one, mm -hmm. but what would you like the audience to get out of, of success in London at, at the weekend? They're going to have an experience of themselves mm -hmm. that as a result of that experience that we're going to create, they'll begin to get a vision of themselves beyond where they are right now. And they're going to be introduced to methods and techniques and strategies that will allow them in this new economy where we are, where many people don't have a safety net, how they can begin to live their greatest life. Not a life of mediocrity, their greatest life, where they will discover when they leave that event, they are going to feel better about themselves. They're going to be more motivated, more challenged. They're going to become risk takers. Viscott said, if you're not willing to risk, you can't grow. And if you can't grow, you can't become your best. And if you can't become your best, you can't be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? So Helen Keller was right. She said, life is short and unpredictable. Eat the dessert first. You know? <laughs> but I didn't do what I'm doing for 14 years. 
because I didn't think it was possible. I was being practical, I was being logical, I was being realistic. I, I just couldn't believe that I can compete with people with PhDs and MBAs, and I don't have a college degree. I didn't believe that companies like AT&T, Procter & Gamble, McDonald's Corporation, IBM, Xerox, would hire me to come in and teach them how to do something I had never done. And so part of what I believe, my favorite book says, lean not unto thine own understanding. There are some things that we know in our hearts that the mind can't wrap itself around because we've been conditioned to be practical and, and realistic and logical. But what they will find in being in the success experience of how to begin to rise above that, how to begin to manifest their greatness. And when you're pursuing your greatness, you don't know what your limits are, so you act like you don't have any. Yeah. Wow. That's my story. Wow. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> that is profound. And, you know, you. I would encourage everybody out there, please, please, please come to the Excel on, on Saturday. Um, Les will be there. Um, we've got a number of other speakers as well. But, you know, there's a bit little taster of what's to come. I've so. been eating hot pepper on a fork. I can't <laughs> wait to get to it. Trust me on oh, this. Oh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm an assassin. I will kill every <laughs> mediocre demon in them. <laughs> You That's can't miss it. You can't I'm miss it. Take you out. Yes. <laughs> oh, Les, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate that, and I am super excited for Saturday. So thank you I so look much. forward to it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.